Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the NHL slate for tonight, November 28th, showing the process that I use using the TrueDFS tools, uh, along with SaberSim, to get an uh, early sense for what the slate's going to look like, to build an early uh, hand-built type lineup, and to get a sense for what SaberSim is going to come up with in two different lineup constructions. One, just using their Saber score, which I might go over a little bit, and other using the contest sims. Just, uh, uh, again, my, my, my goal in all of these videos is that if uh, I don't think that I taught you guys anything, I'm just not going to put it up. You know, if it's just going to be who I like on the slate, it's just, it's not worth it. It really isn't. Because um, the idea behind these is to provide a process for you to be able to employ yourself so that you don't have to come back and watch these videos, if that makes any sense. Now, again, you obviously do need good projection sets and good tools you know, at your disposal, but you shouldn't have to come back every day to these videos to, to, to learn these processes. Um, but nonetheless, I, I do always like to do it in the context of an actual slate. And I know that there are sites that show you how to use SaberSim and show you how to build lineups, but I do like to do it in actual context, showing exactly what I do kind of as I'm doing it. I think that's important. Anyway, um, let's first take a look at just the overall, you know, uh, context of the slate with respect to team totals and see if there's any kind of outlier, outlier total. So uh, Toronto 3-7, New Jersey 3-5, Minnesota 3-5. So nobody really, at least yet, over a four. Seattle 3-4, Edmonton 3-6. Yeah. Okay, all the way at the end of the day, you have Vancouver at 4.3, um, which is, uh, I love those late night games. Uh, it's just, uh, you, you, could, you could swap, uh, you can hedge, there's all kinds of stuff you could do when you have a lot of exposure to these late night games. And that being a 4.3 total does give me some hope. All right. Um, and again, just because the team totals are high doesn't mean the plays are going to be what you want. So let's take a look and see what these look like. Now, again, what I'm showing you now are my sheets, which are on the TrueDFS site. Um, but I just, again, want to show you how to use them. You know, this is just basically a list of players, salaries, projected points, projected point per dollar, projected value score, projected ownership. So what the hell do we do with all this? So there's two things that we do with it. One is we just can, can uh, look at it and build lineups with a couple of inferences. And the second thing we could do with it is upload it to an optimizer or a, a simulator to have it build lineups for you. So let's start with, again, just looking at these numbers and seeing what you know information we can glean from it. So again, we're sorting them first by sheets value score, which is a combination of point per dollar and fantasy points. And the first thing I'd like to see is what kind of value there is. So like, who under 5K is showing up in the top of this list? And it's not too much. The first one I'm getting is, is the Seattle winger at 4,200. Uh, and then another Seattle winger at 4,800. And then you have a couple of cheapos down here, uh, a 3K guy and another Seattle guy. So I, I'm already seeing you know the writing on the wall here that the Seattle stack is going to be a very, very high value stack whether it means that you could play them as one-offs, whether it means you could play them full five-man stacks, or whether it means you could come, you know, use, use them as complementary stacks or you know, higher salaried options. So that's the first thing that I kind of notice is the Seattle guys are going to be very, very popular, you know, probably, but also they're going to be very, very strong plays. Next thing I notice is you know, the, the two Toronto guys near the top of this list. Uh, and then you have a third guy from Toronto as well. Now, there's not the number one even strength line, but it's the first power play line. So if you can get away with it to play uh, Nylander, Matthews, and Tavares in the same lineup, uh, it's definitely going to provide you a lot of upside for fantasy points. Now, if these Seattle guys are cheap enough, which we've already determined they are, I could already start to see kind of like a Toronto-Seattle um, pairing making a lot of sense. Uh, Jack Hughes, top overall play, but nothing else really from New Jersey showing up here, so probably not going to play him. Uh, Elias Patterson, 
So he's from that Vancouver game I alluded to earlier, and it would have been nice to have access to that late night hammer stack, but it doesn't look like anybody else is looking that great. Uh, Nashville, all right. You have Forsberg and Josie. That's not terrible. And then you have this Edmonton situation where you have McDavid and then not a hell of a lot else. So, so from a hand building perspective, I think I know what I kind of would want to do already is do some combination of Toronto and Seattle. And that seemed to make uh, quite a bit of sense. Um, so what I'm going to do before I even get into anything else, well, should I do the stacks first? Yeah. Let's look at the actual view from a st- uh, the stack view, which is also available on True DFS. And here I take like the top five guys from each team and I rate them as a stack by either here, raw points, here, value, which is point per dollar, and here, modified stack, which is essentially the sheets value score metric. And you'll see that Toronto is showing up as both the top modified stack and the first top raw point stack. And I presume that in value, Boy, I thought Seattle would be the number one, but actually Nashville is the number one. Um, but I still think that the Seattle guys is going to be what, what makes this all work. So let's put this uh, uh, over here and we'll pull up a, a lineup builder just on DraftKings and see if we just can't jam these guys in. So let's just start with the what's which is probably hard to do to Matthews, Tavares, and Nylander, just like that. Um, now, before we do anything, I want to put a cheap goalie in. Now, unfortunately, I don't have all the goalies projected, and the ones I do are kind of expensive. Tristan Jerry, 3,800. Uh, let's put him in. Carter Hart, he's always he's always good for, for something. So we'll put in Carter Hart at 7,200 and see what we have to work with. So now we have only 3,780 left. So that's what makes this stack, like, really, really hard. Um, because, you know, even if we're going to use Seattle guys, as you'll see, they're not cheap enough to make it work. So you have 4,200, you have 4,800, you have 4,100, but you don't really have that flat 3K. Um, you do have uh, Ezemont from Tampa, so you could do a one-off, something like that, but overall it becomes very difficult. So, uh, Doing this Toronto stack is probably just not going to work. It's just it's just too expensive. Um, now let's see if we start with the Seattle's. What that looks. Like. So we're going to have. Let's make sure they're all on the same of these power play. You have Tolvin and power play. McCann's not on the number one power play. So here's the problem: is you don't really have great correlation here, which is annoying. See that? And Everly's not bad. So it's actually not as easy as I thought. Uh, it's not so easy to play the Seattles. So we have to think about something else, you know, um, and it's turning into not the greatest hand-building lineup uh, slate as I thought. Uh, you could play Morgan Riley instead of one of these guys, but again, it, Comes a very very difficult uh, difficult thing to do as far as price goes. So why don't we just like play the Seattle guys? Uh, we'll play Tolvenin. What are we doing? If, what are we doing then? We have a line three power play one, line one power play two, line three power play two, and then line one power play two. Boy oh boy, this is not easy. We can go back to the Arizona, play Schmaltz at 4,700. This is not going to be an easy slate. Boy, I thought it was. So you know what we're going to do? Let, let's have Saberson kind of help us here. You know, let, let's see what Saberson would come up with. Um, let's uh, upload the projections into... Sabres. And now if you're on true DFS, this will do it, you know, this will be there automatically. I know it paints us out. We'll exclude him. I'm just kind of curious what what Sabersim is going to do here. 
we'll wait on this. What would I even do? Would I play these Seattle guys? I guess not. You know, another thing you could do is just go straight to the the stack thing. You just can't play all these Toronto guys, and you can't play all these guys either. Very, very difficult. You play these Nashville guys. Maybe we go with the Seattle dudes anyway. And we play, let's pull these up. I'm just very stubborn about this. So I do think I have to, I should be able to make this work somehow. All right, Seattle. Who do we say? It would be, not Schwartz, it would be McCann, Eb Eberly, Bur Borkstrand. Oh, he's, he might not even play. Ugh. Um, well, let's put him in for now. <laughs> and then Wenneberg. 2,900. So you could do this. And then probably play some Torontos. Uh, this is a train wreck. Let's see what Saberson comes up with. All right, somehow managed to do Torontos. But what types of stacks are these? Ah, you see? Not an easy slate because you're getting four twos, three threes, three twos, four threes. So not so easy, Mr. Us, Mr. Saberson. Like if we knocked out all of these types of stacks that we don't want and we just kept the four threes, five twos, and sixes, let's see what types of stacks we can even get that make any sense. We don't want the four twos. We don't want the three threes. We don't want the five zero. Oh, five twos we can keep. Oops. I got to find the five twos again. Five twos we'll keep. Four three five twos. Get rid of the five zeros. I can't even imagine what we're going to come up with here. It's probably going to be pretty ugly. But there's Seattle. See all the Seattle guys rearing their ugly heads? All right. So team stacks. Somehow we got all these Torontos in. How? Because you played four threes and you played, oh, you played this value over here. Okay. Five stacks. You were able to get some five stacks of Toronto, Arizona, Nashville, and a little bit of Seattle. And this is why, listen, this is why you use uh, Sabersim and the optimizers somehow, sometimes. Um, sometimes you can't even get to good hand built lineups on your own. And that's that's totally okay. So let's uh resort these though by saber score, which is actually what I want. Yikes. And let's see the stack exposure now. All right, that's fine. Let's get rid of the, the four twos. Let's be pure. Because I was just sorting by just regular projected score, which is what I don't want. So now when you sort by Sabre score, which means you want upside and things like that and ownership fade, now all the it's getting all the Arizona, which I kind of like. It, I, it makes me feel as though we're utilizing the tools at our disposal and we're using the projections and we are getting like these Seattle's that we want. We're getting some Toronto's, we're getting some Edmonton's. As far as five mans, it's more actually Arizona than anything else. And I kind of like this. Now we could change the min uniques to min two, for example. Get really greedy though about this. And min three, even. I mean, this is fine because it allows me to get a little bit more, you know, a little more diversity. So let's let's stick with these for now. We'll put these into the contests. Uh, only 40. Okay, so let's uh, we'll save all these for now. And then what we'll do is I want to 
add the contest sim so that we can run it if we feel like it. And now, first of all, let's uh, let's make it forty, and then we'll resave these to here. We duplicate is fine. That means we're putting this one of the lineups, like our best lineup, in the kick save. We're putting in the penalty kill. Now, before I do anything, I would like to uh, download these to my, or upload them to my, uh, well, not not upload upload lo upload lineups. We want to edit entries. And now the next thing I want to do, and again, I have to decide whether I want to actually do this as far as lineups are concerned, but I want to run the contest sims. So you saw what I did before, right? I right clicked and I added these two contests that I'm in to the list of contest sims that they're going to run. And then we're going to hit run contest sims. Now, again, for those, the uninitiated, what Saber Sim is doing right now is it is running our full pool of lineups like against a field of lineups that Saber Sim is projecting the field will play. Okay, so the idea is that based on its ownership uh, rankings, um, it's going to suggest a certain bit of lineups. Um, and what it's trying to do is figure out what lineups get the most leverage against those. So in, in a weird way, it's building, it, it knows what lineups you're supposed to play and assuming people will play them and then saying, okay, why would you, we're going to give you something else to play. So let's just take a look. Uh, so instead of ranking them by regular Sabre score, we'll rate them by, say, risk-adjusted ROI specifically from the kick save. And now you'll see that you'll be getting 87% CF. Um, now, again, what you do with this is up to you. Um, there are some people that completely rely on the contest sims and and, um, and just, just blast and go with this. Or you could go and put we're already on Min Uniques three, but if you went to Min Uniques four, then you kind of reduce the the exposure here and play a little bit more this way, right? Only fifty percent Seattle. But again, the thing is, is that if you are going to rely on the contest sims, keep in mind that you are presuming that the ownership uh, the ownership projections are somewhat strong, you know, because that's it's upon that that your you know field of lineups has been built to compare your lineups to. Um, I actually kind of like this. So we are going to go ahead and uh, and upload these. Save these to the, the kick save. We'll keep the penalty kill the same. And then we'll move these lineups over here. And again, you know, that's, that's, and that's what you do. And that's what I do. And then after, actually, after, and honestly, after the slate locks and you have the opportunity to make late swaps, you want to rerun this and do this all over again. Um, I'll show you that in another, another video, some other time. But uh, the, the, the real question is whether you want to use your, your the Sabre score rated bills, uh, rated lineups or the, the contest settings. And it's, I, I wish I had an answer. Sometimes I just feel as though uh, I want to do half and half, but I think overall you're probably building good lineups because you know you, you're using good projections, the QDFS projections. You're using a good lineup builder, um, so overall you're probably in good shape, um, regardless of which method you use. Which is kind of bizarre, right? Because with one way of doing it, you're getting all this Seattle, and yet. In another way of doing it, you're getting all this Arizona. So maybe go 20 of one, 20 of the other. You know what? If there was an answer, this game would be solved and it wouldn't be any fun anymore. So that's all I have for today. Uh, good luck, everybody.